Right. Hello, I'm Melissa Leach, Director at IDS in Sussex, and it's really great to be with you all today. So we're at a time of really big global and local challenges and disruptions, whether we're talking about environment, economy, politics, society. And at this moment, we need more than ever to find and build pathways to sustainability and also social justice. As I've argued with colleagues in Future Earth and at the Steps Centre and elsewhere, these need to steer us within a space that one might call sustainable equity or equitable sustainability. And they need to be transformative, challenging the status quo. Science and knowledge are crucial in helping us find and build these pathways. And the social sciences and humanities in particular have really key roles to play. But we also need to think about knowledge and science that is in itself transformative. And that's what I want to talk about today. We need to move beyond instrumental linear approaches, which just see knowledge as feeding into managerial approaches to sustainability and instead embrace more transformative, engaged and therefore inevitably political perspectives. So what do I mean by transformation? At its broadest level, it conveys radical change, the kind of radical change that we need now. But different views draw on very different theories, traditions of scholarship and ideas about the world. So, for instance, we might think of critical structural approaches with their origins in historical Marxism and elsewhere, which would point to the need for fundamental changes to our systems of production and consumption and the meanings that go along with those in often talking about moves towards post-capitalism or even doing away with the capitalist system altogether. Others, though, advocate more managerial approaches, approaches to transition, more incremental moves, which might be involve combinations of perhaps technological innovation, progressive policy, incentives to actors to do things differently. And still others argue that change must actually emerge from below, through networks of civic movements, through grassroots activity, less steering than nurturing from the bottom up. And then, of course, we have theories of transformation which actually derive from non-Western perspectives altogether, from ways of seeing and acting in the world that don't draw the same kinds of boundaries between society and nature as we're accustomed to doing in, in dominant science and mainstream thought. Now, I think there is value in holding all of these plural ways of thinking about transformation in our minds as we move ahead. They create a richer picture. They're not necessarily reconcilable. You can't integrate them, but you can use them to provide different angles, different optics on what it means to identify and build really fundamental pathways of change. I think we also have to be aware that big changes can come about through small changes. And to extend the metaphor of pathways, we might think about the footpaths or the bush paths, which start very little, but may gradually coalesce, link up with each other to the point where they actually begin to displace the highways, the motorways, the, the dominant tracks that have driven ways of thinking and acting. So there can therefore be small seeds which lead to big changes over time. And I would also hold that our pathways to sustainability must be plural. One size is not going to fit all for everybody, for every place, for anywhere. And instead, we do need to be keeping alive a real diversity of ideas and action which suit different places, different contexts, even while bearing in mind that some of the fundamental Anthropocene challenges that they need to address affect all of humanity and beyond. So, what sort of science and knowledge do we need in identifying and building these transformational pathways? Well, science and knowledge can help identify several aspects, several Ds about these pathways, the directions they move in, the distributional um, outcomes, who gains and who loses from different pathways, the diversity that we need to take us forward, and a fourth very important D, the democratic impulse which keeps alive debate amongst different kinds of knowledge and different people who hold different forms of knowledge. So four Ds which I think are crucial for transformative pathways. Now one 
aspect of the science and knowledge that we need is that it is also plural in the sense of being multi and interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinarity um, must mean not what we often see, which is the natural sciences, the technical sciences take the lead and social and humanity perspectives act almost as kind of handmaidens, telling one about a few behavioural insights perhaps to, to bring up the rear, but actually an equitable partnership in which we mobilise multiple forms of knowledge together and look at the interplay between them. This offers, I think, a huge number of opportunities. One is to keep challenging assumptions about technical and managerial solutions and that they will work. It helps keep attention to power relations, centre stage, drawing on the perspectives we can, can have from history, from the humanities, from the arts, from political science, from political economy. Social sciences also ensure our attention to social justice and equity and fairness and the diverse social traditions through which those things have been theorised and explored. They enable an appreciation of diverse meanings and framings of where pathways are going, their directions and of means to get there. Framings that include not just those that emerge from different social sciences, say from anthropology, from geography, but also from different places and people. And I think they under, underline the importance of attention to indigenous knowledges and perspectives. Um, social sciences also bring vital nuance and adaptation to questions of the acceleration of transformations and indeed their scalability. They do underline that one size doesn't fit all. We can't just scale up and scale out something that works in one place. We need to adapt. And I think finally, but not least, the social sciences offer us some very important ways of engaging with complexity and uncertainty, recognising that solutions and ways forward are not to be found always amongst things we can know, but instead we need to be navigating amongst the things that we cannot and may never know. But it's not just interdisciplinarity and the social sciences that we need here, but also transdisciplinarity. Um, or another way of putting it, engaged knowledge, engaged science. At the Institute of Development Studies, we sometimes talk about four pillars which are needed to underpin engaged knowledge. One is rigorous, robust research, often interdisciplinary, bringing together multiple perspectives. A second, though, is co-constructing knowledge with actors in society, be they citizens, community members, um, civil society groups, governments, international agencies, um, so that they're not just the takers of knowledge who are somehow expected to kind of implement them in a policy or political process, but actually co-creators of the questions, co-designers of how you collect data, co-communicators and co-sharers in what you do with that data. And that leads to a third pillar, which is about the mobilisation of evidence so it can make a difference. Um, and that this can involve lots of different tools and techniques and methods from online platforms and digital means to dialogues of all kinds across time and across space. And then finally, there's a fourth really key pillar, which is partnerships and collaboration and relationships, which are equitable, which bring together knowledge holders and learners from diverse places, from diverse backgrounds, into a forum where they can debate in a democratic way and deliberate the pathways, where they're going and what kind of knowledge needs to be mobilised to help get us there. And all of these four pillars are mutually supportive. We need them all um, and take one away. And I think our approaches to transformative knowledge crumble with them. So this way of working is not at all easy and it inevitably confronts challenges. So here are just some of them. I think in many of our institutions, we see a lack of support for the kind of interdisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity that I'm talking about. It isn't recognised amidst inevitable hierarchies or siloed approaches to prioritising or dividing up or bounding certain kinds of knowledge and action. These approaches to co-construction are difficult. They require skills, facilitation, patience, ways of bringing people together and fostering equitable dialogue, and that's hard to do. Working with internationally diverse, dispersed teams bring all kinds of challenges, cultural challenges, communicative challenges, management challenges. 
And then of course there's power, because what we're talking about is around challenging incumbent power. And that can be difficult, it can be dangerous. Politics is often messy and engaging in those messy politics is inevitable, but it's often uncomfortable. And finally, doing all of this requires that we acknowledge our own positionalities, whoever they might be, the subjectivities that we as scholars, as activists, as policy agents or whoever we are, bring to the table. And that requires reflexivity and it requires a good deal of humility. There are difficulties, there are challenges, but there are also a huge number of really exciting examples out there of people, of groups, of doing, who are doing exactly this, building transformative knowledge to in turn build transformative pathways. And I really look forward to sharing and hearing more about some of those in this conference and to working together to build and learn from them. Thank you.